And it's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thanks for staying with us this morning. Let's look at uh, the threats by telecommunication companies uh, to withdraw their services due to the debts being owed by uh, banks. However, the Association of Licensed Telecommunication Operators of Nigeria says the accumulated debt from unstructured supplementary service data, that's the USSD, owed to them by banks, rose to 80 billion as at November 2022, and now they're threatening to withdraw their services. Don't forget, we are moving towards a cashless society. But this morning, we have a guest joining us uh, via Zoom, engineer E.K. Namani. He's the president association of telecommunication companies of Nigeria at CON. Thank you so much, Dr. Engineer Namani. I beg your pardon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Nice to be here with you all. All right, then. L let me ask you, why is the association making this threat at this time very critical for our economy? You know that we're going cashless with this CBN policy. Why now? Uh, it's not a case of making threats. It's just uh, letting the general public know that if something is not done and the payments are not made by the banks, uh, unfortunately, the telecom sector may not be able to provide this service anymore. And the reason we're making this uh, known to the general public is at the end of the day, it is the subscribers that may suffer from it. The uh, reason being that this is not an issue that just came up. It's been on for many years now. In 2019, there was, uh, when the debt was still about 32 billion, there was agreement reached in terms of uh, how the banks were to pay it. Uh, they ignored that uh, agreement, did it honor it. In 2021, by this time, the debt has risen to about 42 billion. Another agreement was reached uh, that involved the CBM, the Telecom Regulator, NCC, and the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. And um, at that point, we all felt a final arrangement has been reached that will ensure these debts are paid. Unfortunately, the banks again have totally ignored the agreement and refused to honor it. And the consequence of that is that the debt have now risen to about 80 billion. And our concern is that uh, with the trend and the way the banks are approaching the issue, there is clearly no means or willingness for them to pay. And uh, unfortunately, it will simply lead to inability of the telcos to be able to offer the service. Now, two things is important here. The banks already have the money because they've already debited the, uh, the, the customers, you, you know, account for this money. So the money is sitting with the bank. We're not asking for something that the banks don't already have with them, right? Uh, the second one is that there's an agreement that this payment should be made. And for some reason, uh, the bank just refused to make the payment. So it's good to put this in perspective. It's not like we are threatening the industry or the country. We're simply making it known that, unfortunately, we are running out of the resource to continue providing the service that is meant to be paid for, which for some reason the banks have simply refused to pay. So um, we understand all of this challenge and uh, all that you have said. This conversation, like you had mentioned earlier, started since 2019. I'm asking, why now? Why haven't we... Um, because we have run out of the ability to provide the service. Uh, it costs money to provide the service. As you know very well, um, the telco industry has been suffering from all kinds of challenges, lack of access to forest, high cost of operations due to high cost of diesel. So it, it just got to the point where it's no longer, status quo is not sustainable. You, you know, uh, unfortunately, that's just the status of, of, of the situation. The telecom industry cannot continue to provide this service when it's not being paid for, especially when the banks are sitting on the money. So do you have an idea why this bank or the banks have refused to remit this money? Just as you have uh, said, that uh, they have, uh, they have uh, the money. Our hope and expectation is that with the uh, awareness being created in the general public about this problem, uh, per adventure, maybe the next section you should have, which should be with somebody from the banking sector, so that they can probably explain to Nigerians why they have willfully refused to pay this debt, right? 
So we don't know. Uh, only the banks can explain why they willfully refuse to pay this debt. So um, have your association made any efforts? Uh, what has the Apex Bank done about this? I'm talking about the CBN. Uh, are they in the know of this situation? What approach have you taken you know, to ensure that uh, the association ensure that these funds have been remitted by the banks? The agreement that was drawn up, uh, uh, the last one being 2021, had the CBN, had the banks involved, had the telecom regulator, had the Ministry of uh, uh, Communication. Every key stakeholder was involved in drawing up that agreement. So they are definitely aware that these payments and the terms for it uh, was agreed and signed up by every party, you know. So um, it, it's just a case of... Uh, one of the parties to the agreement for whatever reason, which, as I said earlier, they're in a better position to explain to the general public, simply refusing to honor the agreement. Uh, we all know the state of the country. If you take a facility from any of the banks today, and for whatever reason you refuse to pay, they're not going to sit back. They come after you. They seize your asset that you pledged as collateral, right? The banks are very aggressive when they seek to recover their money being owed by the general public. Unfortunately, we not seeing the same proactive step by them when they are the ones going to pay their bills, and it's, it's most unfortunate because mm. it has a direct impact on the quality of service being offered in the country. Okay. Uh I'm still trying to understand. You say that there are several persons who are part of this agreement, and uh, the assumption is that everybody knows. But has the association or your association taken deliberate steps, you know, to communicate with these parties who were, you know, party to the agreement? Over, take it from me, over and over again, demands for payment has been made. This has been escalated to every key stakeholder including everybody that was involved in drawing up the agreement, and we've just got no response. Mm. So um, let's, you know, have uh, this conversation now. What will be the implication of uh, the withdrawal of your services on the economy, especially now that we're going cashless? Um, to start with, again, um, we are hoping uh, it doesn't lead to that, but unfortunately that is where we are headed if nothing is done. Um, our hope and expectation is if the writings are done, then this can seriously be avoided because to the best of our knowledge, the users of this service have already been debited, so the money is sitting with the banks. It's not like the money is not already with the banks, right? So let's hope it doesn't get to this ultimately that they uh, listing and able to do what they need to do. But if they don't, um, as you clearly know, people will simply notice that um, the the e-payment e channels that are currently available to them are no longer available, right? You'll not be able to do some of the bank transfers you can do on your phone, your uh, mobile money kind of transaction, some of it will cease. Um, a few other services that makes life convenient and make the financial industry uh, much more beneficial to the users will simply not be there. Uh, and I'm a little puzzled that the banks are really not taking this seriously, realizing the fact that this is a critical part of their business, right? You would assume that for something this important to them, that they would take it more seriously than uh, they, they tend to, to take. Maybe they've just taken it for granted that the telecom industry would somehow keep offering this service and not bother to collect the debts being owed. But unfortunately, we are at that point where uh, currently we don't have the resources to continue supporting this service if not paid for. Well, uh, th there's this popular saying that, you know, the judiciary is the hope of the common man. Uh, why haven't you or your association approach, you know, uh, the court of law? Um, between me and you, um, it's easier if you can't offer the service, even if the court asks you to offer it, you just don't have the ability to I mean, offer I mean, it. You're, you're, you are being owed 80. What I'm saying is that we are getting to that point where we will not be able to offer that service. We won't have the resources. It costs these systems that you use. You have to pay the vendors that supply you that system. And if you can't pay the vendors, you won't get support for it. We are talking about technical support for the platforms that we use to offer this service. We've not been able to pay the vendors because the banks have not paid. 
it's not a case of going to the court or anything. It's purely a case of inability to offer the service going forward. But it's not like we can offer the service and we choose not to offer it. We are getting to the point where we simply won't be able to offer the service. And that is why we are trying to raise this, call it alarm, for the rest of the country to be aware that something is about to happen which can be addressed at this point. Don't get me wrong. It's not that we will be able to offer the service that we will choose not to offer it. We would simply not be able to offer the service because there will be technical support because the vendors that supply the technology have not been paid. Now, I, I understand uh, that which you have said, but, you know, it's a concern. You say that an agreement was reached and uh, the agreement has been uh, not been respected. Now you're being owed. The banks are owing uh, up to the tune of 80 billion naira. And I'm saying, is that not worth seeking a redress in a court of competence jurisdiction? I don't think there's any bigger uh, court of jurisdiction than banks simply honoring their debts. <laughs> it, 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 it's as simple as that. People should be honorable enough to pay their debts, especially when they're in a position to pay it. Mm. Okay, uh, we'll leave it at that. Let me also further ask, you have uh, mentioned that the implication would be that uh, users, just like myself and yourself as well, will not be able to uh, be able to use these services where you transfer funds from one person to another person. What about, you know, um, purchases? Can people still buy data, pay for different services? Is that also going Any to be affected? Any of those services that is USD based, like some of the ones you've listed, will be affected. So, so it's going to cut across the, the whole chain of services that today people enjoy. And again, why we find this a little puzzling is that the banks are probably the biggest beneficiary of this. This is why they use the service, right? That is why they use it, because it kind of helps uh, bridge the gap between the traditional banking system and the digital economy. And in no sincerity, we are surprised as any other subscriber on the street why the banks are taking this route, knowing how critical this is, not just to the users, but also to the banks themselves. Mm. All right, we have to leave it at this. I foresee a situation, I mean, from all that you have said, it's probably that we're going back to the stone age. Maybe uh, if you want to buy data or recharge your mobile phone, you have to go back to look for the cards and... This is going to be very dramatic if that happens. But we're hoping that the banks would respond to your consent and relevant quarters, you know, would ensure that the common man doesn't suffer because that's where we're heading towards, the common man suffering in 2023. Paraventure that happens. Thank you so um, much. Okay, go it's ahead. It's totally avoidable, and we hope uh, the banks will do the right thing. Uh, again, I repeat, this money is sitting with the banks and they just need to pay it because they've already debited the customer's accounts for this money. It just, I think the banks are just using the money for some other stuff, which uh, is not fair, not fair to the customers, not also fair to the telcos. Mm. And one would just be wondering if, you know, there are no other means to get the banks uh, to comply with an agreement. Although you say it's just honorable that if you get into an agreement, you you owe a person or an organization, it's just important that you pay up. But however... Fingers crossed. Let's see how all of this pans out. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer E.K. Namani, for being part of the show this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. And, and that's the size of it. We'll be speaking with uh, Engineer E.K. Namani. He's the president of Association of Telecommunication Companies of Nigeria, ATCON. Uh, we do appreciate your time this morning on the show. That's where we end it. We'll return tomorrow with more interesting lineup and conversation. If you missed that on any part of the conversation, it's fine because you can catch up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic Thursday morning. <laughs>